In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the spray tool as well as how to use the tweaking tool to create a series of objects as well as manipulate the attribute of those objects. In order to use the spray tool, you first need to select the object which it will be using. And at this point, I will focus on how to speak spray copies as well as how to spray clones, you do also have the option to spray a path. There's a one key difference between copies versus clones in that if you were to spray a series of clones and then later change the appearance of your parent object, it will be applied everywhere else in your file and it can optimize your efficiency to what you work with if you know you can apply changes in one area and have it applied to everywhere else. This is different than say the copies which in this case now if I were to modify this object you would see that only the clones have taken the change. Depending on what you need, you may want to use one or the other. If you are going to clone your objects, you will not be able to randomize, say, the color, however, but you will be able to blur it and adjust its position in the composition using the tweak tool or even some of the properties which are available if you want to set them up on the spray tool itself. You can select more than one object to spray. For this, you would highlight your bounding box or select them one by one. What I want to do is I want to create copies. And it will, at this point, I have not made any modifications. It will appear like the parent parent object. It will inherit its, its shape, its color, its stroke. It will inherit everything. Now, you can either randomize these attributes by adjusting the values here, or later on I'll show you how you might do that using tweaking. Amount is the frequency. I'm going to lower that. The higher you put this, the more items it will create. Rotation will adjust the how it rotates around to a certain degree. Scale is to the degree of the size variation, scattered, and so on. You can see it now has created a little bit of a variation to the stroke itself. This is, say, different than manually adjusting the attributes of objects by using the tweak tool in which you can adjust the force, which will be the amount of change applied to the selected objects. It is important that you select what objects you want this change to be applied to before you use this tool. And say, for example, first, I would want to shrink or enlarge the objects. In that case, you will drag over your objects and shift drag to achieve the opposite effect. They are clumped together. And suppose that I wanted to randomize their position to distribute them, move them away from a certain point towards a certain point, or even directly manipulating an entire area depending on if you want to move it all the units together in a certain direction. You could also move them manually by dragging them individually, but this is how you might apply it to a selection of objects as a whole. If there are too many objects, you can duplicate it at this point if you click and drag, but whatever's under the cursor now can be removed. Now, that was a bit too much removed, for, so I have decreased the amount that this 
effect will be applied and it'll start to remove less from the selection. You can also adjust the color, the different parts, by selecting to change or jitter actually the colors of selected objects. If you were to put it at a very high value and select all the options, this will change the color, the hue, saturation, lightness, opacity. You will see that it's applied to the stroke and the fill. Now, if you don't want to change the opacity just yet, and you want to keep the same color scheme, you don't want to adjust the hue, that will leave saturation and lightness. And if you see here, the cloned objects do not take these changes, however, the copies in fact do. You select what you want to apply, if you do want to change the color scheme, you can change the hue. Ah. It might not be changing the opacity at this point. Say, for example, if you have a fill and the opacity option set. So putting that back to a full opacity for all these options so that I could adjust this value now, making sure all the objects are selected and applying the opacity. Now that didn't show up as expected to begin with simply because I had previously adjusted this manually and it might have been interfering so what I did was I put it back up to 100 and then reapplied the effect. You can't force this to go the opposite way. It cannot be brought back. It will choose a random fill or stroke variation depending on what you select here versus where you can directly control certain aspects when you shrink or move the directions of objects. You can blur particular areas to reduce what the eye focuses on or to direct it to a specific area of your composition. For that you would Similarly, drag across the selection you want it to be applied to. Now, lowering this value to something so it changes a little slower, you can manipulate these a little easier. And more importantly, when you do this, you can bring items back into focus by shift clicking them to do that. There is also an option to roughen parts of paths. I specifically do not use this tool because it tends to not behave as I expect it to and I often have to save the file before I continue with, with using it. I actually won't use that in this demonstration now. You can play around with this if you want in your own compositions and maybe it'll work better for you when you are not actually recording at the same time when it has more memory to work with. Now when you're working with spraying objects and you want a background, you can either add the background later or put it on a separate layer and lock it so that it's not going to affect that portion of your composition. You can see here, I've set this up as the background layer. And I'm just going to adjust one final part here with my object. So you can see, 
you can, as you can see, the gradient effect is applied to that particular area. You can also use clones of the leaves if you want to manipulate the internal colorings as well. For now, this is a basic demonstration. I'm going to hide this layer and just make one final change to this particular area before I show you how to apply this as a pattern and why you might want to apply this as a pattern.